was born Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey. He would later change his name to Douglas so that it would be harder for his master to track him down after he escaped from slavery. But he was born to an enslaved woman and to a white man, and it was presumed that his master was his father. He never had a pair of pants or shoes until he was about seven years old. And he used to sleep head first in an old corn sack on cold winter nights with his feet hanging out because it was the only way he could try and keep himself warm. And he only saw his mother four times his whole life. And that's because she lived on a plantation that was 12 miles away. For in order to, for her to see her son, she would have to work in the fields picking cotton from sunup to sundown and then walk 12 miles in the middle of the night just to spend a few precious moments with him until he fell asleep. And then she would walk 12 miles back so she could be back on the plantation by the time the sun came up, because if she wasn't, as Frederick wrote in his narrative, his first autobiography, she would have likely faced a brutal beating. But he did have someone early on in his life, his grandmother, Betsy. And his grandmother's job on the plantation was to raise the children until they were old enough to really begin their life in manual labor. And on this plantation on the Eastern Shore, that was right around five or six years old. And, and his grandmother said to him, we're going to go on a long journey. And that journey was a walk that extended 12 plus miles where they were going to go and she was going to drop him off at the Y House plantation. Now, she had done this many times before with the other children, but not necessarily with her own kin, her own grandchild. And so if you can imagine this little boy making this long journey, and, and I, I imagine she's carrying him much of the way when his legs wouldn't carry himself, and they would finally make that last mile walk from the street up to the house, and he would run off a little bit to check out his surroundings. And when he turned around, his grandmother was gone. And so now he was truly alone. He was an orphan. He, as I mentioned, only saw his mother a handful of times, didn't know who his father was. He had brothers and sisters, and they were like strangers to him. And now the only person that showed him some love and nurturing early on is gone. So you have this little boy who had no family, he had no home, and he had no country. But in spite of all of that, he was able to rise up and to go on to effect change and to change the course of history for our country. We would be a very different country had there not been a Frederick Douglass. This is the message that he heard from his master, is you cannot teach a slave how to read and write because if you do, it will unfit him to be a slave. Did you all hear that message? Yeah. So Frederick looked at his master and thought to himself, if you don't want me to have this, I'm going to do everything in my power to gain it. And he understood right then and there, as the middle schoolers said to me earlier today, knowledge is power. And education equals freedom. It would be his pathway to freedom. There is a Frederick Douglass sitting in classrooms everywhere. There's a Sojourner Truth. There's a Harriet Tubman. There's a Susan B. Anthony. There's a Cesar Chavez. Pick your freedom fighter of choice. They're sitting in classrooms everywhere, and we just need to awaken their spirit and their consciousness. And as the young people say to me, get woke. <laughs> Douglas said, without struggle, there is no progress. And I'm hopeful that after this struggle that we are going through right now, that we will come out on the other side better people who are more loving and caring and understanding of our differences and I think this is what Frederick Douglass, his spirit, can do. And so I hope that like each individual that we're giving this book to, in fact, there was a young girl that said to me, Mr. Morris, I researched my family tree, and I found that my great, 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 great grandmother, four greats, was born into slavery. She taught herself to read and write in secret, she ran away, she became a successful businesswoman and a philanthropist, and the young student said to me, so do you know what that means? Do you know what all of this means? And before I had a chance to respond, she said, it means I have greatness flowing through my veins, just like you do. All of us have greatness flowing through our veins, and history lives in each of us. 
But the future depends on how we carry that forward. Thank you.